Now there's something interesting that happens when you start to focus on positive outcomes. You start to get them. How many of us have gotten into a relationship? We're really excited about it. And then once you got into it, you're like, oh shit, this sucks. And you started thinking about how they're gonna cheat on you. It wasn't good. You got insecure. It didn't feel good. And then the relationship ended. Why? Because at the beginning, when you have nothing to lose, right? There's the least investment. What are you focused on? You're focused on how you're gonna get them. That feels fucking good. Well, I'm gonna get something I don't have. Now when you have it, right, there's this thought, oh, I'm gonna lose it. And then you focus on what? How it's gonna end. Anyone ever heard if you want the relationship to last, treat it the way you treated it at the beginning? Why? What does that really mean? It means focus on the things you focused on in the beginning. What did you appreciate? What did you want? That's how you keep love going, right? We talk about this honeymoon phase ending. It doesn't need to end. My best friends are my best friends now. They were five years ago and they will be in 20 years. My parents are my parents now. I love them just as much, if not more. Why do people take things for granted? Because they focus on what they don't have. They focus on how things are gonna end. You have to become aware of your focus because your focus is your fucking power. It's your power because it's the direction in which you're going. If you're driving a car and you're looking off the cliff, where's the fucking car going? So we need to stop doing that, right? Would you feel emotions of stress, anxiety, and sadness if you're about to drive off a fucking cliff? But we do that every day. We focus on what we're not going to have, on what we're going to lose. If you knew for a fact your life was going to end, and it was going to end soon, there are two options that can happen for you. One, you become a very miserable human being, and you think about why it's unfair to you that your life is going to end. You're going to start thinking about why this had to happen to you. Or two, you start to appreciate every fucking moment, and you make the most out of what you have left. Now what you don't realize, everyone think about your age. How many of you guys can remember high school pretty easily? How many of us can remember middle school, elementary school? Like that, things move like that, right? How many of you guys look at pictures from five or 10 years ago and you're like, holy shit, that was five or 10 years ago? Do you think it stops? It gets crazier, it gets crazier. Time starts to feel less and less and less. So you have to learn how to be present because when does change happen? When does change happen? No. So when are we gonna change? No. When you say diet starts tomorrow, what happens tomorrow? It happens again tomorrow. When you make a change, change has to happen right now. So what do we need to focus on right now? Write it down. What do I need to focus on right now? What part of the positive, right? Think about that. I'm gonna start focusing on how much money I'm gonna make. When you train your brain to see that every day, what's gonna happen? Your brain's gonna formulate a fucking plan, a strategy. I need to start talking to people. I need to start learning from people. I need to start seeing the answers that I don't have. Now, why is that important? Because time is the most valuable resource on the planet. Can we make more money? Always. Can we get more time? Never. When I go out to dinner with my friends, I fucking pay every time. When I go out with my friends, if I have the opportunity, I wanna buy them everything I can. I just bought my parents a fucking house. I wanna do everything I can because I know that money is abundant. Therefore, I'm never worried about the fact that I'm not gonna make more money. I'm always worried about the fact that I won't have enough time with the people I love, so I wanna make the most out of that time. When I leave or someone starts fighting with me, I ask them why, what's wrong? I don't wanna keep fighting. I don't like feeling these states. I like to feel happy and love. So I make the most. If you knew that your parents were gonna have one last conversation with you, how would that conversation look? Someone very dear to me told me a story. When he was 16 years old, he came home from school. He had a younger brother and an older sister. And he went into the kitchen and there was a fruit bowl and there was one banana left because they weren't that wealthy. And he went to eat the banana and his dad said, no, leave that for your younger brother. He needs it, he's growing. So he goes, what do you mean? I'm fucking hungry, why does my brother get to eat it and I don't? And they start fighting. It ends up saying, I hate you, dad, and he leaves. The next day, he didn't say anything to his dad. He went to school, he came home, he didn't say a word to his dad. The following day, he wakes up again, he wants to say something to his dad, he wants to resolve it, but his ego won't let him. He feels resistance to it. So he goes to school, 
He comes back. He doesn't say anything to his dad. He goes to school again the third day, except now he's feeling really fucking bad because he's like, fuck, you know? I want to say something to my dad, but he's a stupid kid. What does he know, right? He fought with a, over a fucking banana. He comes back home. He opens the door. His brother, his sister, his mom, his uncles, everyone's in the living room. But his dad's not in the living room. He runs upstairs. He's like, Dad, where are you? Dad, where are you? Dad's nowhere to be found. Dad! He comes downstairs. His mom's crying. He finally notices everyone's crying. And he goes, where's my dad? His dad's dead. And the last thing he said to his dad was, I hate you, dad. And you know whose dad that was? That was my dad's dad. My dad's 70. He thinks about it every day. Every day he thinks about it. So when I leave my dad, I let him know how much I love him. When I stop seeing my parents, I let them know how much I love them. If I had a busy fucking day and I have to stay up an extra hour to go visit them, I'll do it. If my friends say, Marcel, I'm coming over, I'll stay up and see them. I was looking around at some of your routines. Most of you didn't even include that. How many of you guys included a phone call to your parents or your friends? Connection is what's going to make you happy, whether you're fucking broke or rich. True wealth does not come from money. It comes from connection. And that's something I need you guys to understand. Connection, connection to others, love. Do you know what it's like? My friend Jason, he's in the back, raise your hand. Where is he? There he is. He invites me to sushi one day. This was January 27th, 2018. I remember the date, it's cemented in my brain. He invites me to sushi. We go to sushi. I'm ordering, I go here all the time, I'm making $350 a week. At the time, I thought I was fucking bawling. Three years ago, I was 19. I get a phone call from my dad, I answer the phone. I hear my mom crying in the background and he goes, both your dogs are dead. I only had two dogs. They slept with me every fucking day. I fed them every fucking day. I walked them every day, I played with them every day. I hear my mom crying and he goes, both your dogs are dead. I said, what do you mean? He goes, both your dogs are dead. I stood up. He immediately saw me turn white. I went outside, I started crying. I had just played with my fucking dogs. And now they're dead. They both got ran over. I come home, I hear my mom crying through the front door. I don't want to go in the house because I don't want to see them. Because only seeing them hurt, only hurt me more. So we had just cut down a tree in our front yard and there are logs everywhere. So I go to sit down on the log and tell my mom, I heard, until I would hear her stop crying. And I go to sit on the log and I look, and there are my two dead dogs right there. Do you know what it's like looking at their face after they got hit by a car? Whereas before they were wagging their tail. My heart dropped. I just started crying, I felt guilty. I went, I started kissing them, I was saying I'm sorry. I hear my mom, I'm like, I can't change this. I can't control this. There's no, what, what can I do? For an hour I'm sitting there, I'm like, why is this happening to me? I'm 19, why did, why did this have to happen to me? I just lost another dog two months ago. My parents were broke at the time. I'm barely making money, but I'm trying to start this career so I can help them not be stressed. And this keeps happening, things are getting worse. And I said, what can I do about it? And after about an hour, I'm looking at my dogs and I said, I'm not a fucking victim. I am not a fucking victim. And I remembered an interview Tony Robbins had when he was young. And he said he had a six month waiting list and he would charge people a thousand dollars a session to get rid of any fear or phobia. I said, I can fucking do that, I do that. And I got up, I looked at my dogs, I gave them one last kiss. I went in my house, I put on the only suit I owned. I didn't say anything to my parents because I had nothing to say to them. And I said, in my mind, I'm not coming home until I made 40,000 fucking dollars. The most I'd ever made in my life was $350 a week. I put on the only suit I owned, it was short. I go outside, I went to every fucking bar I saw, I went to every, every restaurant. I didn't come home, I left that night. It was, a, it was Saturday night. I came back on Monday morning at 5 a.m. Except the difference was I'd walk into bars and I'm like, if you want to change your life, go to the back of the room. I had nothing to lose. I got rid of my limiting beliefs around money. I immediately understood. Money is not about money. 
Money is about what you believe you deserve. Money is there to help your parents. It's to help you. It's to make life easier. Money is not bad. Money is useless in my pocket. Money is useless in their pocket unless I help them. How much is it worth to them to change their fucking lives? And I started to believe that I'm here to change their life because I can't do anything about this, but I can help my parents and I'm gonna help them. And I decided at that moment that I'm gonna stop being selfish. I'm gonna stop going out to sushi with my friends when I should be going there making more money for my parents. When I should be spending more time doing the things that matter, working on myself. So I'd go to restaurants, I'm like, if you wanna change your life, meet me outside. And people would get up and they would go and I would talk to them. And for the first eight hours, nobody signed up with me. I was too, I was too upset. I could not get it. And finally I said, that's it. This is not serving me anymore. I love my dogs, but I need to make a difference. I need to do something. And I did not give up. I was exhausted. I didn't drink water. I was dehydrated. I had a headache. I was starving. I was fucking tired. It was like 4 a.m. And I went to cafes that are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week in LA. When things open, I went to breakfast spots and I got 40 people to pay me $1,000 overnight, over two days. And I came home, I gave it to my parents. And after that, I said, I have no excuse for why I cannot continue to change people's lives. Now I want you guys to understand that change happens like this. It's a decision, it's a moment. Change happens when? So this time when we get in a fucking peak state, I want you guys to know what it means. It doesn't just mean getting in a peak state and yelling your fucking ass off. It means conditioning your brain to get into a state where you are unstoppable, where you tap into abundance and connection at a level you haven't done before, where you understand what it's like to actually go for what you want without hesitation because it's not about you. If you're selfishly motivated, you'll never be fucking motivated. Motivation doesn't come from you, it comes from what you wanna give to others. It comes from what you wanna give. When you're stuck in this place of I can't give, it's also because you're not gonna get. And if you focus on what you're not gonna get, you're gonna feel like shit and you're not gonna get shit. The more you want, the more you have to give. That's, that's, the, that's the truth, that's the secret. And you don't give to get, you give to give. If you give to get, you're not focused on what you're giving, you're focused on what you're gonna get. When you start to live life serving others, whether it's your friends, your family, your future family, your kids that aren't born yet, when you start to think about others, you find real motivation. So when we get in this peak state, I want you guys to not just think about what it's like to yell and what it means to stand up and yell. I want you guys to understand what it actually means. It's an emotional state of power that allows you to do the things you truly fucking want. So are you guys ready to tap into that fucking power right now? Yeah! Stand up. Everyone right now, think about what you want. Close your eyes for a sec. Don't sit, don't sit down, just close your eyes. Close your eyes for one moment, relax. I want you guys to imagine yourself in one year. I want you to see what it's like to truly become the person you want to be. What do they do differently? Are they selfish? Are they in their head? Are they thinking about others? You see, when you do things for others, it's not about you anymore. Your fears don't matter. When you do things for the people you love, nothing else matters. Go ahead and open your eyes, and when you do it this time, you're not doing it for you, you're doing it for the people you love the most. So are you guys ready to change your life right now? Say yes! 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 yes. yes.